Your husband, King Abdullah, I believe it was last weekend at the summit uh, of Arab leaders in, in Cairo, he said, the message the Arab world is hearing is loud and clear. Palestinian lives matter less than Israeli ones. Our lives matter less than other lives. I know you've said a lot about, you know, your feelings about what's going on right now, but do you think in general that that's true, that even world leaders and others, and you meet a lot of them and so does the king, which is why he said that. I assume. Well, well, like I said, you know, it has been very disappointing to see the, the double standards in the, wor in the world today. To see that, that, you know, the strong condemnation of what happened on October 7th, but very little condemnation of what is happening today. Why isn't there a call for an immediate ceasefire? We are seeing staggering human suffering happening today. You know, why is the narrative always skewed towards the, uh, to the Israeli side? You know, uh, the, the Western media and policymakers are quick to adopt the Israeli narratives. When, uh, when Israel attacks, Palestinians die. But when Israelis die, they are called, called, murdered in, in, in cold blood. It's a massacre. So even like on October 7th, we've seen uh, the situation described as savagery, barbaric, bloodthirsty, cold-blooded, you know. But we're not seeing that terminology being des describing the situation today, even though the atrocities are of greater magnitude. I'm not arguing accuracy, uh, Christian. I'm arguing equivalence and, and double standards here. When the president of the United States is, is told that, he, you know, he has evidence, he has seen evidence of children beheaded only to retract because the IDF said that there's no proof of that. That is confirmation bias. Even at your network, Christian, you know, the, the CNN website uh, at the beginning of the conflict uh, reported a headline of uh, Israeli children found butchered in an Israeli kibbutz. And when you read through the story, that it's not, hasn't been independently verified. Now, my question to you, would you publish a, such a damning yet unverified claim made by a Palestinian? Um, Queen so, Rania, I, know, I just need to the, stop the, you right there because there, there have been pictures shown by the Israelis and, and our journalists have been down there. Your husband, the king, has said that there is a, there has been anyway, an attempt or suggestion to move, uh, to move Palestinians who are trying to seek you know, seek, seek safety, either into Egypt or into Jordan, your country. And, and, and the king has said, this is a red line. I think the plan by, by certain of the usual suspects to try and create de facto issues on the ground. No refugees in Jordan, no refugees in Egypt. Well, uh, look, the, the people of Gaza now are, are facing two choices. Either they leave or they face death or collective punishment. So essentially, they're giving a choice between expulsion or extermination, between ethnic cleansing and genocide. And no people should be given, uh, have to face that kind of choice. And what my husband was referring to is the people of Palestine should not, of Gaza, should not be forced to be moved again. They're, most of the, ref, but most of the uh, residents of Gaza are already refugees. And, to, and right now, at least a million have been displaced from their homes. So we do not want another mass uh, displacement of Palestinians like what happened at the Nakba in 1948. And that's what my husband meant about this being a red line. The Palestinians have the right to remain on their land. Yeah, because they were concerned about so-called forcible transfer and never being allowed uh, to come back. Um, there have been quite a lot of protests in your own country, as in many other parts of the, of the world. Are you concerned about the anger and, and the wider war or the wider instability in countries like yours or in others around, around the region? Well, you would be concerned if there is division, but we are absolutely united in our stance. We all believe in the same thing. We are all feeling the same pain. We all want uh, the same thing. And so the, the, I think there's a lot of unity uh, in, in the Arab world. And as I said, there is a sense of, do our lives matter less? You know, why is it that when people uh, are coming to represent, uh, you know, the Palestinian issue, at the top of an interview, they have to have their humanity uh, uh, cross-examined. They have to present their moral credentials. You know, do you condemn? And we don't see 
uh, you know, Israeli officials being asked to condemn. And when they are, you know, you just, people are readily accepted by our right to defend ourselves. I have never seen a Western official say the sentence, Palestinians have the right to defend themselves.